Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome, and if you're returning, welcome back. And I hope that you find my supply and demand technical analysis as well as the fundamentals useful every week. And um, if you are new and don't know, you can uh, skip to your favorite uh, pairs on the technical side. Um, there is the pairs are time stamped in the description box below but i prefer if you obviously watch everything because you need to see the whole picture and um we start off as we do on the fundamentals and sentiment analysis and get pretty much just get a recap of what happened last week and uh, what's coming up this week so last week if we go to forex factory um we had a busy week first of all japan um there was the japan um, monetary policy statement and pretty much they held um stands pat and uh, trims inflation outlook you know ahead of expected rate cuts so they basically um uh, with the hot potato rather than you know cutting before the fed they pretty much said all right then well um it's over to you first and see what the Federal Reserve do. So then all the you know all the eyes were on the Federal Reserve cutting rates and um, the Fed Reserve do cut rates on Wednesday the 31st. Uh, the first time they cut rates in a decade to 0 0.25, which was expected. It was either going to be 0.5%, which was the deeper cut, or it was going to be a no cut, uh, which would have been, you know, the surprise ones. But this was the expected um, cut at 0 0.25, almost known as an insurance cut. And the sooner as uh, the Federal Reserve done that, the day after Donald Trump decides that he will impose 10% tariffs on other goods, 300 billion of Chinese goods starting for, uh, September the 1st. And this, you know, really kind of surprised the markets, surprised everybody, um, you know, surprise tariff announcements, announcement came after the US and China. We started trade talks in Shanghai this week. Yes, everything was going, you know, swimmingly, I guess. And then all of a sudden he, uh, you know, throws... Um, his toys out the pram, I guess, uh, to try and strengthen his negotiating position. He wants a weaker dollar, and as you'll see on a price chart, um, the dollar actually, you know, did the opposite to what a lot of people expected, which is it actually gained in strength after a rate cut. Um, so uh, I guess he tried to bring the dollar back down to earth, um, and again, um, strengthen, try to get some more leverage. Um, and really kind of speed up these trade talks and I guess try and come to some sort of conclusion. Um, so then uh, the markets kind of sold off as we'll see and the, and the yen ended up strengthening. And then we had uh, the um, non-farm payrolls. Uh, on Friday, US economy added um, 164,000 jobs in July, which was pretty much as expected. Again, going back to Forest Factory, and there was really no surprises there, um, as expected. Um, and that's how it came out. So, uh, again, no real surprises. But uh, today, there was um, some positive news, I guess. Trump says things going well with China after tariff shock. So President Donald Trump said things are going along very well with China two days after his move to threaten tariffs of hundreds of millions of dollars in the go in additional Chinese imports sent global stock markets tumbling. Not only that, um, it uh, you know rattled the uh, the forex market, and especially if you were trading risk off, you would definitely would have made you know a little bit of money um, buying the Japanese yen. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see that on the price charts. So looking. Uh, to this week, uh, what we've got is the U.S. non uh, some non manufacturing jobs, jobs, job reports, and producer prices, which are going to be important for inflation. U.K. Qu uh, quarter two GDP growth, and there was a Bank of England uh, news as well, but they pretty much are in a holding position. They have to kind of wait and see. They don't know what's going on with Brexit, so um, it wasn't you know too much movement on the uh, pound this week. Um, but that's going to be important as well. Um, GDP growth, business investment, foreign trade, all probably expected to slow Germany factory orders and trade balance. Again, that's going to be very important for uh, the euro zone and the euro in general as Germany is the euro's powerhouse. And if that's continuing to slow down, Mario Draghi has already said, you know, the week before last that they're going to introduce stimulus. So, um, 
this just adds to the narrative of that. If uh, you know Germany's factory orders are struggling, China trade figures, inflation, and services PMI. China news is always important um, because they are the world's, uh, I guess, economic engine. And um, if they start to slow down, you're seeing the effect really of the chi- of Trump's trade. Uh, potential trade war um, and who's winning who's losing if anyone is winning or losing um, but it also affects um, the, the world and mostly um, Australia and New Zealand and then you've got Jap- uh, Japan's second quarter GDP growth again very important I think and this is due to the Bank of Japan adding stimulus if the second quarter um, GDP growth slows then there's going to be um, again it adds to the narrative and and the need for the Bank of Japan to really kind of add stimulus to kind of stimulate the economy cheap money is always good for the economy so they need a weaker and they also need a weaker yen um, and Australia trade balance is going to be important as well and that's for GDP investors will also react to central bank policy meetings in Australia New Zealand and India and if you go to Forex Factory this week you've got a lot of New Zealand news um, employment change unemployment rate um, expected to kind of grow um, on both inflation expectations always important and then the important cash rate uh, for the oh for the Aussie I should say uh, they expected to hold this week and then you've got a statement but you've also got the cash rate for New Zealand and actually they're actually expected to cut um, you know, on on Wednesday, so um, yeah, that's uh, all. Central banks are pretty much cutting, um, and then you've got the press conferences, trade balances, etc., etc. Pound GDP month for month, and then you've also towards the end of the week, really, um, you've got kind of CAD news, employment change, unemployment rate, and then core PPI. So for the dollar, it's a very very light week, um, and it's more, I guess, focusing on China. Australia and New Zealand. So, if you do want to find out a bit more about fundamentals and how you know to trade fundamental analysis and what this all really means, then there's a free fundamental analysis course. Link is in the description box below. Uh, loads of modules there, and also show you how to you know a, a one way of how to trade the news. Um, but yeah, pretty comprehensive, and it's all free. And uh, you know, discover really why. Uh, fundamental and risk sentiment is is real the real reason why or one of the main reasons why um you know the markets move so let's get into the technical analysis and we're going to start off as we always do on the dow jones dollar index and the dollar index so this week um prices came well last week i say the prices came down into or up into the uh, supply zone and dollar index just a measure of dollar strength versus the other major currencies euro yen pound and australian dollar and what you saw was instead of really kind of selling off which again a lot of traders expected the dollar to do it just kind of kept going from strength to strength up right up into you know the actual rate cut continued to go slightly higher and then donald trump kind of you know um uh opened up his mouth and uh said you know what he said about the uh, trade tariffs so um market kind of did the opposite really and uh, there was obviously demand for the dollar leading up to the rate cut and how we use the Dow Jones dollar index is is just simply to look for confluence if the dollar starting to the dollar index is selling off then you want to look for any dollar crosses to sell off as well because that would indicate some dollar weakness but um, didn't get it this week um, and uh, you know into the end back end of the week Thursday Friday seeing you know the Dow Jones starting to pull back markets have to pull back at some point so if we go to chart and update it what we'll see is we can delete that and what we actually have is a demand zone right here it's hidden demand for those of you that have taken the course and uh, potentially what we could see is a move higher from here if you are you know very bullish on the dollar but I think markets have really moved you know quite high um, so potentially what we could see is prices and the dollar start to sell off I can delete that for now or what we may see is prices go through that demand zone and if it starts to create higher highs higher lows 
then we know that there's some demand there. Then we'll wait for it to pull back into that demand zone before prices you know, go higher. So um, many scenarios to uh, look for um, with the dollar index. And uh, what we're looking for, if you're looking to buy the dollar, is for those types of scenarios to play out. If you're looking for supply at the moment, there is some supply here. But until this area really gets... Um, you know, starts to move past that area of demand, then what you want to do is wait for a pullback into that newly created supply zone. And then again, this would be confirmation. So you'd be waiting for any kind of bearish price action um, on the on this and then looking for bearish price action against the dollar on um, any of the dollar crosses. Um, so moving on to the dollar yen and uh, so last week price came up into this supply zone and then we held, 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 and then a bit of a fake out stop hunt. Um, setup was right here and then due to risk off, you know, the, the yen literally, um, you know, strengthened. And uh, if what Donald Trump is saying is true uh, and going back to his uh, everything going well um, at the moment, if that is to be believed, then uh, this could be a great buying opportunity, a really, really good buying opportunity, um, you know, for the dollar as um, the yen won't really strengthen in a risk off environment, it'd be risk on again. So um, the, the dollar is the uh, stronger out of the two economically. So um, if you go to the charts and update the chart, Here we go. So there was really no demand at any of these uh, prices, but potentially there could be demand here. Now it's closed below this uh, this demand zone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna delete it. Yeah, and what we'd have to see is prices, you know, to kind of make again higher highs, higher lows, and then what you want to see is prices come back to this created demand zone before looking at long trades so um yeah i think that's really the play um well done to you guys if any of you did manage to get short at this uh, at this level and then this is going to be really where the short trade is right you need price to come all the way kind of up to here before looking at any kind of uh, short trades let's just uh, put this back so you need price to come really come back up to this uh, 108 or what you could see another scenario is for prices to kind of pull back to a level and then create a new low and it does, if it does that then that will create a supply zone and then you'd be looking for you know any kind of price to come into that supply zone before looking to get short so um, that's uh, those are scenarios you're looking for Moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss again, just like the yen, um, the Swiss franc actually strengthened due to risk off. And again, decent trade Again, another stop hunt around here and prices are now into this demand zone, which actually looks quite decent. I do like this and especially if, uh, if again, um, risk is back on again, the Swiss franc, um, there was also some news for the Swiss franc last week and it was actually terrible was it on here uh no but it was definitely um the swiss franc uh came out as a uh, um i think it was their was it their gdp numbers or something like that that wasn't that was 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 actually terrible actually i think it was um inflation inflation was like minus five so they're further or further away from their two percent target and uh so um, it's not looking very good for the Swiss franc. So I want to be a buyer. I'm going to look to be a buyer in here. If not, a buyer down into this demand zone. But let's go to the charts and see if anything needs updating. So we've got that level there. So right now, it's a decent buy. I do like this. Um, if not, then it's going to be, I'm going to be a buyer down here. Um, dollar yes the dollar is you know um you know uh weakening but out of the two i'd rather be um a buyer of the dollar as if risk is on if risk is off 
Yeah, if risk continues to stay off as the market opens on on the uh, Sunday evening, uh, you know, uh, UK time, Monday, and the headlines are really, um, you know, bearish and stuff like that, and uh, the, the reports coming out that Donald Trump is still, you know, wants to impose tariffs, etc. Then what you're looking for is a pullback into supply, and then looking for, you know, shorts, or you're looking for a move down you know, move up into a level and then move down as long as this creates some sort of supply zone as well. Yeah. So dollar Swiss, now moving on to the dollar CAD. Dollar CAD, again, price came up into this supply zone, you know, touched it a few times and now we have a, a decent pin bar uh, formation. This could be profit taking, this could be a reversal. Um, if the dollar weakens, then this will look like a, uh, a definite um, uh, reversal. I'm still a buyer with the dollar over the CAD anyway, so any pullbacks you know, into demand is gonna be where I'm gonna um, look for prices. Um, this week as well, you, you did notice that prices came up into this, you know, came up and then came down into this demand zone, giving a nice buying opportunity on the lower time frame as well. So, um, if you manage to get involved in that, well done. Uh, but in the face of uh, a rate cut, not many people probably would have taken that, you know, that trade long. And you can see there was definitely a few pips in that. Um, so waiting for really price to come back down into this zone. This is not hidden. Uh, actually, is it hidden? No, it's not hidden. Hidden demand. This is still be a demand zone. Um, or down right, preferably down into this 1.3, you know, near round number. If I can get a buying opportunity, uh, let's go to live chart and updates. So, what do we have? I'll keep that zone there, and all that zone will come down to here, and everything pretty much stays where it is. So, right now, Monday opens. If you want to, you know, trade some dollar weakness, if there is dollar weakness, then you're looking for, you know, pretty much a obvious trade right there if you want to trade that pin bar if you want to make a price to maybe on the intraday come up slightly retrace a little bit and then you know giving you a bit a bit more risk reward um but again we're waiting for prices to come up they may not come up and you may miss the trade so there's always pros and cons to you know that idea and you wait for price to really kind of come down into here before looking either for buy trades or buy trade here so um dollar cad i think um as well, we've got some, some CAD news this week, um, employment, so uh, it depends on really what you wanna um, look to do with the CAD and what your really your forecasts are for the Canadian dollar, uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and pretty much this week it is sold off. You know, there was really no demand at that price up until now. And uh, I think this has really kind of happened. Um, I was kind of a bit late to the party on this one. Didn't realize that they, they were going to cut or potentially cut up, but they were really gonna you know, hold rates. But the market seems to think that they're going to uh, cut rates on Wednesday. So I think it's a buy the rumor, sell the fact. So even though dollar cut rates, um, dollar being the strongest out of the major uh, currencies, I think the, um, the New Zealand dollar also cutting rates has weakened or potentially cutting rates has weakened the uh, New Zealand dollar. So going to the chart, let's see, and we can pretty much just delete that and delete this. Now with this kind of price action, if prices are really kind of weakening into a rate cut, um, again, by the rumors or the fact that the market is probably pricing in a rate cut. Now, um, at the time of the rate cut on Wednesday, you know, prices are already going to be at um, probably a, a, a low zone. So, how much further could this really, you know, go down? Especially if the dollars are also cutting rates. So, um, I think this potentially could be a decent buying opportunity. You know. Um, but I wouldn't do it necessarily. I personally wouldn't do it against um, the US dollar. Um, there are definitely better currencies to buy the New Zealand dollar against. Um, but if you did want to get uh, long, then now is a decent time. Just be careful as well, though, that this level has touched once, twice. So it's not the freshest area to look for, you know, uh, long trades. 
if you are looking to get short on this currency pair at the moment it's literally up here before looking at short trades or again just looking for maybe a positive move and then looking for a move to come you know down and then look for prices to come back to that um, supply zone so that would be uh, a lower high created lower low and then once that's created you go back to there and then look at short trades so um, New Zealand dollar at the moment coming down into um, a decent zone if you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar and uh, again all central banks are cutting rates if it was just one central bank cutting rates then um, you know or the New Zealand dollar was RBNZ was only the only one cutting rates then um, it, it might be a bit of a, um, a dangerous move buying just after a rate cut but with all central banks you know cutting um, then this, this 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 still could be potentially a buy uh, moving on to the pound dollar pound dollar with brexit um, and a lot of uncertainty prices have literally just sold off this week why you'd really want to buy the dollar is is um, is is it's not really fundamentally um, or even sentiment wise um, a, a trade that is makes any or much sense so uh, yes no demand at that zone not surprisingly and now we've come down into a longer term demand zone uh, last week so I'm looking at pound dollar I'm gonna delete this and this was a long term demand zone from way back in 2017 um, now what you probably want to see is if you're looking to get long is you're looking for you know probably an opportunity now if you're looking to get short technically we've actually created a um, supply zone but what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to move this here give that a bit of space and you've got supply zone there because we've made lower highs lower lows so supply so what you're looking for is actually for price to come say on an intraday let's say for example you trade on a one hour time frame as you can see where the supply you know starts and that's where supply is strongest so you're looking at price to kind of come up into this zone here before looking at any kind of short trades um, again but keep in mind as well though that you are buying the dollar at an expensive area right you are buying at an expensive area because look where we are if you're looking at the context of things you're buying the dollar at highs even though yes prices have gone down but you're buying the dollar you know selling into you know the sh shorting into uh, after a move has already gone short you know the best thing to do is maybe look for potential you know pullbacks so if you do get some good dollar cent um, pound sentiment then this is really the, 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 the ultimate place to kind of get short and that's where I'll be looking to get short unless again proof of value prices really start to make their way sh lower again and then this will be the zone to get short on so um, moving on to the euro dollar euro dollar um again we expected and what the market expected was for really the um the the, the, the dollar to kind of weaken and of course prices went lower then donald trump came out with what he came out with and then you know we got some dollar weakness so probably ended up taking out all the stops that were that were below here right below, below this level and now we're getting a bit of a pullback but this is a decent shorting opportunity this week so euro dollar if we delete that there's no demand but there's a bit of supply in this area so as market starts to pull back this is where we are looking to get short on this um, you know this area between this 1.114 to 1.118 nine eight nine nine level is where looking to get short if not that would be the short trade you know around this uh, 112 24 level 
um, and uh, further up. So decent. If we're looking at demand and you're looking to buy, there's really no demand on the daily until and again it's difficult to say that whether there's going to be really kind of any demand that's going to hold from you know 2017 sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but it's a zone anyway to look out for let's see the market will create its own um actually is is there a bit of a zone here it might be let's see or is that gone um no i'm gonna keep that there matter of fact i'm actually gonna keep that there i'll put that there and then i'll make that there yeah so there we go as you can see where it's actually held from that level so um yeah decent demand right now if you did want to be you know buy got a bit of a pin bar there dollar weakness you know could uh could occur this week and then that'd be a decent buying opportunity if you wanted to buy the euro um but just keep in mind that the euro is definitely the weaker out of the two so this this wouldn't be um any you know trade that i would hold for any length of time doesn't mean that prices can't come up further and further but you have to be the obviously the judge of that as uh, fundamentals and sentiment is what kind of moves the market uh we've got the euro yen euro yen this week came up into this supply zone and then that supply zone, you know, pretty much held, and then risk off came into the market and sold off. So this was a, a great um, week if you were, you know, buying the yen and risk off. We're going to the euro yen. What I want to do now is just extend that up to here, to here, and now what we're looking for is prices to even move back. Yeah, that's one option. You need either a pullback and then a lower low, and that creating a lower high, and then a move back into that zone before getting short. Um, and again, the the you really need to look for some risk off um, sentiment. If risk is on, I don't think any of these are you know great. To be fair. They're not necessarily, it's not, it's not my favorite pair. I'd only really trade this to the downside and risk off knowing that the euro is um, the weaker out of the two. Oh, potentially gonna, gonna sell off. Um, so any kind of pullbacks. For, from a demand perspective, we are down into this, you know, this lower area of demand. But I think the next area is gonna be from way back here. There and there, going to be the two areas. If you wanted to put the model, we've kind of well, we'll say, have we cleared it? I'll put it there. I'll just put it there. And yes, we've got a close below, but let's just say that it hasn't cleared it. There is, there would be an opportunity, especially if risk comes back on into the market on Monday. If risk on, then I think the euro will strengthen from now so um depending on what happens on monday so this trade isn't over it isn't over i'll keep that there and uh, it is a buying opportunity if you want to be a buyer of the euro um moving on to the aussie dollar and aussie dollar this week price ended up selling off again you know very uh very strong um, dollar but also as well Aussie was getting weaker and this was due to again the risk off sentiment and the Australian dollar doesn't do well in the risk off environment um, I think the the US dollar was, was going to be the strongest anyway out of the two but you know the risk off environment did not help the, the Australian dollar at all this week so um, you know this level now is definitely gone um, these levels of demand have gone so what I have to do is take these out and I think this is definitely due a pullback but and this is all part of this demand zone here as well and I'm gonna put it like there I'll put it I'll put it here as part of that wick of demand so there could be a decent reversal right now that being a 
um, a little little pin bar. Uh, what else have we got? Literally, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bearish closes. So the more uh, bearish closes we have consecutively, uh, the more likely we are to at least pull back at some point. So this could be a pullback point. And if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar, now um, may not be a bad time. Um, I'd be looking for really um, prices to um, uh, to create supply zones um, so that I can short this currency pair. So you're waiting for um, a lower low, which creates a lower high, and then again a move back. Price come back into that supply zone, and then you've got something like that. Or what you might have to do is what could happen is prices could start to make lower high, um, higher highs, higher lows, and then create a move down, and then something like that with price come back up into that area there and then short trades right there but as it stands um nothing there's no really no supply zones until way up here uh, and then finally we've got the aussie yen and aussie yen um again if you were looking to sell from uh, last week or the previous week up into here pin bars nice short trades and then we've had getting risk off price have literally sold off so Aussie yen no demand at anywhere so again we're just looking at supply zones if we're looking to get short and these are where the supply zones are if we're looking at demand Let's see where there's any, if there's any demand anywhere. I think the last real kind of demand zone was way back. This is a level that's been touched a few times. So where am I going to put this? Where to put this? Right, here we go. Put it from there to there. Demand. As you can see, it's a level that's been touched, 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 touched. There we are, and now we're into that large area of um, of, of demand. So pretty much, I think um, if we wanted to potentially make this a bit more accurate. Then what you want to do is we've got a bit of support within that demand zone. So I think the seventy-two round number is going to be where there could be. You know demand or even like i said it's coming into you know sunday open you know monday if everything is okay and uh, the tri the trump trade fears have gone away then this looks like a, a very very good buy an extremely good buy for the uh for the australian dollar i do like that um and again same thing as the uh um aussie dollar where you're ever going to see if you want to get short either lower highs lower lows if prices create some sort of supply zone and then you're waiting for a price to do something like that where you kind of get in that, that supply zone there otherwise you're looking at a uh, a move all the way up here before you get uh, short at that area right there so um, that's it for this week um, hope you've enjoyed it Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share. If you like the content, leave a comment and I'll get back to all of you um, who have left a comment as soon as possible. There's been some you know, great questions and um, I've been busy, um, been quite busy uh, for the past few weeks, matter of fact, and I definitely will get back to every single comment at some point. So, uh, you know, it might be delayed, but I'll get back to you. Anyways, guys, take care and have a great trading week and uh, speak to you soon.